Hi, welcome. Bob Ross, the late great American landscape painter, he believed in happy accidents, and so do I. But when it comes to producing extraordinary coffees, controlling every variable, and understanding what each one contributes is key. Up until the last few years of scientific research and advancement, we'd attribute most flavors to happy accidents. But now, more than ever, we have the ability to pinpoint exactly where flavor comes from. Let's begin. The coffee I'm serving you today is a result of a happy accident of red and yellow bourbon cross-pollinating. Lucy Fernanda Galindez produces exquisite pink bourbon on her farm, Finca Bella Vista, located at 1,800 meters above sea level in San Agustin, Colombia. Now, since pink is a recessive trait, Lucy has to work painstakingly hard to ensure that she's producing only pink for bone. She processes all of her coffee as fully washed on her small wet mill. Now, if we were to cup this coffee blind today, it would cup like a beautiful washed gesha, loaded with great florality, stone fruit, and a wonderful acidity. But when we were preparing for this competition two years ago, we wondered if there was any way to pull out even more flavor by processing it slightly differently. So we reached out to one of the best coffee processors that we know. His name is Diego Bermudez of Finca El Paraiso. Now after consulting both with Diego and Lucy, we all decided, why not, let's give it a try. So after much coordination with Lucy and her team, they picked the pink bourbon at peak brick count early in the morning. Next, our importing partner and friend, Jose Hadir of Osito Coffee, blow that coffee cherry into his truck and he drives it three hours over the Andes Mountains to Diego's farm. Now when you arrive at Diego's farm, it's almost like walking into a laboratory of a mad scientist. It's loaded with bioreactors, microscopes, and lab coats. And when they receive the cherry, they instantly get to work, first by washing it with sanitized water. This is to ensure that they have 100% completely controlled fermentation. Next, they take those cherries, they put them in a bioreactor for 48 hours, 15 degrees Celsius, pressurizing the tank to 20 PSI. Now at the end of this first stage of fermentation, they collect all of that juice, also known as biomass, and they use it to inoculate local yeast and bacteria at a very specific ratio. Next, they pulp the coffee. They place all that pulp coffee, all that juice, back into the bioreactor. We repeat the process, 48 hours, 15 degrees, but this time they continue to increase the pressure throughout the duration of the secondary fermentation. This is where all the magic happens. It's where all those physical chemical and biochemical reactions take place. They then, in order to lock in all of those incredible flavors, they heat the bioreactor up to 45 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, and this opens up all of the cellular walls of this coffee. They then crash that fermentation in 10 degree water, locking in all of that incredible flavor. Now this works as the same principle as blanching vegetables and placing them into an ice bath. Last, Diego takes the coffee, puts it in his proprietary dryers that work off the principle of mass transfer. This is where it dehumidifies the coffee, excuse me, drying it from the inside out. Now, this will, Diego's processing isn't by no means, oops, excuse me. Now today, I'm dosing 20 grams in, 40 grams out, at around 25 seconds. Now I set these in front of you, I'd ask that you would first assess the crema, and please wait to taste. Now, there are up to 40% of volatile aromatic compounds that never make it into our espresso due to evaporation. But Nucleus Tools, based in Australia, have been collaborating with Zurich University for the last two years. And they've discovered through research that if you extract your espresso over these frozen spheres, you can capture all of that incredible flavor ensuring that you don't miss out on all of the hard work and labor of Lucy Galindas and Diego. Let's write down some tasting notes. You're going to get peach, cherry, oolong tea, 
and a pleasant lingering dark chocolate finish. For the tactile, it is medium in weight. When you extract them over the spheres, it makes it very soft, it makes it very round, pleasantly coating, with that lingering, slight bitter finish. Ask that you stir them four times front to back, placing your dirty spoons in there. Thank you for your patience, <laughs> enjoy. All right, just a couple more seconds and we'll move on. You all ready? Now, Diego's processing is by no means a happy accident, but what does it do to the coffee? It takes all those flavors that are inherent in Lucy's coffee, it laser focuses them and turns them up to a 10. By Diego understanding what each variable is and does, he's able to control it, repeat it, just like we're able to repeat a roast profile on the Stronghold Roaster. Now we roasted this coffee for nine minutes, giving us a development time ratio of 16%. This slightly more aggressive roast allowed us to penetrate the coffee, pulling out loads of sweetness, without covering up that elegant acidity, beautiful body, and wonderful fruit. Now let's write down some milk tasting notes. You're going to experience, on the first sip, chocolate mousse. And on that second sip and a little bit further into the milk drink, you're gonna get a lovely, slightly salted butterscotch. Now, in order to match the precision of processing and growing of Lucy's coffee, we had to turn to milk cryodesiccation for your milk beverage. Now, although freeze distilled milk is delicious, we found it very inconsistent from batch to batch. Milk cryodesiccation, on the other hand, is an exact process yielding the exact same amazing results. Now, this 24-hour process begins by freezing the milk. We then apply gentle heat while keeping it under a vacuum allowing the removal of all water through sublimation, enjoy. Leaving only the delicious fats, the sugars, and the proteins, concentrating this milk up to 900%. We then take 30 grams of that cryodesiccated milk, and we rehydrate it with 330 grams of the same original milk that we began with. Now this not only just increases the sweetness, which is wonderful, but it also gives it a lovely, silky, texture. Can't wait for you all to enjoy. One of my favorite things about it is though, this is where we found the most harmonious balance between Lucy's sweet and fruity coffee and this sweet, creamy, silky milk. Thank you too for your patience. Sorry for the delay. I promise to both give you enough time to taste. I don't want you to miss it. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you so much. All right. Is everyone ready?
ready. I ask you to follow a single file along this direction. Be careful not to trip over the cord. And I've got some fresh water over there if you need to freshen your pallets up. You guys good? All right. Now, for my signature drink, I wanted to create something that was easily as repeatable as Diego's processing and our roasting on the Stronghold Roaster. Now, since fruit is very inconsistent with its sweetness and its flavors, I decided to turn to the sugars and the acids that we find in fruit and use them as my ingredients in order to transform Lucy's coffee into something even more extraordinary. So we're starting with 80 grams of the espresso that I've allowed to chill through delusion. Next, I'm gonna be adding 20 grams of a fructose simple syrup that is both sweet and tart. Now for the sweet side is the fructose. Now this is equal parts of water and fructose. Fructose is a sugar that we find in fruit. It has a very clean sweetness. And it's gonna transform that cherry into a cherry hard candy. Now for the tart side, Lucy's coffee has a fair amount of malic acid, so in order to introduce a new note and transform it, we just needed to add 0.2 grams of citric acid, which gives us an awesome blood orange. Now, if you have acid to something, you need to add some fat <laughs> to balance it out. So we're adding two grams of a butter syrup that I've made by blending equal parts of melted butter, water, and sugar. Now, once that's fully incorporated, in order to stabilize it, I added two grams of an emulsifier called 210S, which is both acacia gum and xanthan gum. Now, for the control dilution of this drink, I've been allowing 170 grams of tonic water to off-gas, removing all of the CO2. Thank you. Now, if you add CO2 to coffee, it creates carbonic acid, and we don't want any of that. So, we're removing it on the magnetic stir. Now the quinine that is in the tonic water is gonna give us a lovely, very clean, grapefruit-like bitter finish. Now, to remind us that this is pink and not a gesha, even though it might taste like one, I'm adding four grams of an all-natural, odorless, tasteless red food coloring. And when we add this red food coloring to the rest of our beverage, it's gonna give us a lovely pink hue. Now to homogenize the drink and pull all of these flavors together, I'm gonna to be nitrogenating it. Now, nitrogen, nitrogen is gonna give it a lovely, pillowy, airy texture. One of my favorite things about Lucy's coffee, as I hope you noticed over there, is the incredible peach aromatics. I wanted to make sure that we don't miss any of that in this beverage, so I'm gonna be adding dry ice to a white tea that has cryodesiccated peaches to it. I'm going to be capturing this peach smoke coming off that in all of your beverages. Now I'm serving it chilled but not cold because I don't want to cover up all of the beautiful flavors. Let's write down those tasting notes. You're going to experience blood orange, cherry hard candy, pomegranate juice, and that pleasant lingering grapefruit-like bitter finish. Now for your drinking instructions. I'd ask that you'd wait until I call time before you start drinking. And when I call time, please take that lid off, place it right next to your water glasses, take in this lovely peach arom aroma, and take a minimum of three sips to ensure that you get really comfortable with its complexity. Thank you. Now, although there were some happy accidents along this journey, such as discovering the pink for bone mutation, connecting with new colleagues, and discovering new coffee processes, it took two years of hard work, collaborating, working with two competing importers, working with two farmers, one very traditional being Lucy, she's a wonderful, wonderful human, and Diego Bermudez for taking us on, which he did not need to. All of us sharing the same goals and desires. That's to produce an extraordinary coffee that we can repeat together every year. I believe if we want to continue to progress the landscape of our industry, that's going to take intentional innovation, the collaboration, and cooperation from all of us. Thank you. Time. Give it up, give it up, give it up!